thank you for listening ears and understanding us and I pray for me the grace to minister expressly in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that which you have for us this morning in Jesus name amen and amen hallelujah glory be to God hallelujah you know God you know the things that God speaks through sometimes are so little they are so minute and um, it's you know like I always say it's important that especially when we are in service you know whatever instruction that um, one is given from pulpit here you know always understand that is an instruction from God I know that somebody might just say ah brother he likes making this why do you make us move this way move this way you know um, at something as simple as that can cause a mighty move of God in your life. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, you, you just don't know it. So it might just be one of the little kids that came to give testimony or say something. I encourage you because um, we don't stand before a man. We stand before our God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And that's the expression of your faith, and that's what I'm talking about this morning. That obedience is the expression of your faith in God. That that's, um, comes with you having an understanding of who God is and how the things of the kingdom, how it works. Glory be to God. So this morning, I want to share with us a message titled, The Expression of Faith. Hallelujah. The expression of faith. Amen. Our faith in God or in God's word, you know, they are to be expressed. Your faith is to be expressed. Your faith in God, your faith in the word of God to you is to be expressed. Hallelujah. A faith that is not expressed, you know, we yield the same results as one that is without faith. Glory be to God. And the faith in God is to be seen, is to be heard, and is to be felt. Glory be to God. Faith is to be seen, is to be heard, and is to be felt. If you have faith in God, you know, people around you must be able to see it. They must be able to hear it, and they must feel it. It must be felt. He is a man of faith. He is a woman of faith. Hallelujah. It's not because we carry the Bible. It's not because we go to church. It's not because we profess to be Christian. It is because of our actions, our expressions. Hallelujah. Your expression, what you express, is what matters. Faith is to be seen. Um, we know the story of how Jesus caused um, the three. The disciples saw the faith of Jesus Christ. They saw it, hallelujah. In several situations, they saw the faith of Jesus Christ. We know this scripture very well in Matthew, Mark 11. Hallelujah. I read a few of them to us. Um, here in verse 12, um, it says, And on the morrow, when they were come to Bethany, he was hungry, and seeing a fig tree afar off, having leaves, he came. If haply, if that is maybe, he might find anything thereon. And when it, he came to eat, he found nothing but leaves, for the time of figs was not yet. You know, I always like to um, rule that line. What does it mean that when it says, for the time of the fig was not yet? Was not the season, right? So was there, did the tree do anything wrong? It's not the season to produce fruit, right? If, it's, if you have a tree in your house, a mango tree, and fruits are supposed to come in summer, and this is spring, would you be upset that the tree is not producing? No. Okay. That's 
food for thought for you. Think about it. Next time you think God understands, just think about that scripture, that line. Hallelujah. But I don't want to shift away from my message. Hallelujah. And when he came to it, he found nothing but the leaves, for the fig was not yet. And Jesus answered and said unto it, No man eat fruit of thee hereafter forever. And his disciples did what? They heard it. Hallelujah. And let's jump to verse 20. And in the morning, as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the root. And Peter, calling to remembrance, said unto him, Master, behold, the fig tree which thou cursed is withered away. And Jesus answering said unto them, Have faith in God. Hallelujah. For very I say unto you, that whatsoever you should, whatsoever shall say to this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he said shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he said. Therefore I say unto you what things soever you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them, and you shall have them. Hallelujah. He said to them, have faith in God. So their disciples saw his faith. Hallelujah. At another point, not this in other scriptures, the Bible tells us that Jesus was in the boat. And the wind was boisterous and the wave and the storm was blowing against it and he was asleep. Then they woke him up and said, Master, care it not that we perish and not that the Bible say he uh, awakened and did what? And rebuke the wind, the sea, and the storm and everything. And the disciples say, wow, what manner of man is this? That even the wind, the storm, and the sea are do what they are obedient at his voice. Hallelujah. Faith in God is to be expressed. If it is not expressed, then it is not faith. Hallelujah. It's just like what I was talking about last Sunday. You know, um, intellectual knowledge and experiential knowledge. Your expression of faith is what will lead to your experiential knowledge of what the Bible says or what God says. Hallelujah. It's what will get you there. So without the expression of faith, you know, one cannot, you know, um, see the results of what the word says. Faith is to be expressed. You know, for us to be able to enjoy all that the kingdom, all that is promised in the kingdom, you know, we must have the attitude of expressing putting expression to what the word of God says. Hallelujah. Many a times Christians don't get what the Bible says, not because God's power is not able to produce it, not because the word is not able to produce it, but because of, you know, our limitation in expressing, you know, the, what the word says, in putting expression to what the word says. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Reading through the scriptures, we find that, you know, our faith must be kind of perfected or to reach maturity. And I'm going to go to the scripture in James and chapter 2. I'm going to jump around it from verse 14 all the way to um, 26. I'll pick different verses there, you know, just to talk about it. In verse 22, it says, Seest thou how faith wrought with his works, and by his works was faith made perfected. Hallelujah. So can you see our faith that was done with works, that was done with expression, how that by works our faith was made perfect? In other words, the faith is perfected by the works or the expression 
that you give to it. Hallelujah. We live in a generation where we are all faith people by our parents, not by our, our deeds, not by our doings. Hallelujah. It's the reason why we have so many faith people on Sunday, but they are scarce on Monday through Friday, through Saturday. Hallelujah. The world, everyone looks alike from Monday through Saturday. But on Sunday, you know, based on our appearance, you know, say, okay, this one is going to church. This one is not going to church. So you can tell this is a person of faith. Hallelujah. But it ought not to be so. Glory be to God. It ought not to be so. Your expression or your action, your works, is what activate the word of God in your life. Hallelujah. It's what activates the word of God in your life. But sometimes, you know, Christians, we are waiting for feelings. We are waiting for something for us to be able to act the way God wants us to, to be able to put action into the world. When the Bible talks about, you know, the expression, you expressing your faith, is the works that you put in because of your belief. Hallelujah. In James and chapter um, 2, just read from verse um, 14. Say, what though it profit, my brethren, though a man say he had faith and have not works, can faith save him? In other words, can faith alone save him? It's better rendered like that. Hallelujah. Can faith alone save him? If a brother or sister be naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you say unto them, depart in peace, be ye warm and filled. Notwithstanding, you give them not those things which are needful to the body, what doth it profit? Say, even so, faith, if it had not work, is dead, being alone. Hallelujah. Say, but with thou, O man, a vain man that, I'm reading 20 now, that faith without work is dead, was not Abraham, our father, justified by works when he had offered Isaac, his own son, upon the altar? Seest thou how faith wrought with his works, and by works was faith made perfect. The term works there in this passage is best translated corresponding action or you put in expression to what you believe. Hallelujah. The corresponding action. Serial. <laughs> Talks when he's not asked to. Hallelujah. So the Bible clearly shows us how that faith you know, without action or corresponding action, is dead. <laughs> Hallelujah. In other words, just faith alone produces nothing. Faith without a corresponding action, the Bible tells us is dead. Hallelujah. In other words, your faith is meant to have some actions because of what you believe. Glory be to God. And this is a challenging part for us Christians. We believe, for example, this chair. We can talk about how much this chair can hold us if we sit on it. We can describe how good this chair has been produced. We can talk about the design of this chair strong enough for it to hold us, but we refuse to sit on it. But we will not sit on it. Hallelujah. It's like somebody says, you know, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And because say, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. Then the person sees this valley of the shadow of death, say, not me. <laughs> then you use wisdom and pass the other side. <laughs> you truly don't believe that the Lord is a shepherd and that God can deliver you, that God can keep you. You, you, you truly don't. Hallelujah. Why? The only way you can prove to yourself what you believe are your actions. 
That's the only way you can prove to yourself your actions, your stance. Hallelujah. Christians are very smart. They know how to avoid confrontation with the devil. They know how to avoid it. Just use wisdom and go to the other side. Be smart. Wisdom and smartness never produces the power of God. It doesn't. Do you know Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego could have used wisdom? Just deny Jesus now, deny the Lord now. After all, you go back and say, Lord, you know now. It's very easy. Daniel could have said, I'm not praying again. At least I'll pray, but I'll close my door. You understand? I'll close my, I'll pray in the secret. After all, it's between me and God. It's not for everybody to see. This thing is between me. You know why you're talking like that. It is because you don't want any confrontation with the power of darkness. And Christians, and without us knowing this, gradually, it's eroding our faith in God. You know, just causing it to move away. You know, I always tell people this. Um, there was a time I came to a crossroad. And I knew this was a crossroad. When it comes to me ever being able to stand. You know, there's a way you can preach the gospel to people. Eh? If you like, take it. If you don't like, take it. But it's not me. Eh? Um, but I came to a part that can I sincerely preach the gospel if I use wisdom in this matter? If I use smartness in this matter? Can I? sincerely tomorrow tell somebody that God is able to keep you or God heals and all those things and without and have conv and conviction in my heart when I am praying this or talking to somebody can I? I say no if I go whatever happens at least I stick with my integrity with God <laughs> hallelujah and it was the time I needed to marry my wife hallelujah we are about to go for traditional wedding if you ever go to my wife's village, when you get to the, the beginning of that village, you will get scared. You descend like this. And you descend like this. The descend in there is no joke. You know, like when you see old video kind of things there. Now, uh, and not going into a lot of stories, but there's someone who is more like the juju priest or whatever in that village or that kind of thing, I said to, to my wife, you know, over my dead body that you will marry this guy. I mean, over my dead body. So you know that kind of stuff. And then a mom had told my best friend, Femi, tell your brother, your friend, he should not travel to a village. If he descends that place, he won't come out. So that threat was there and all those things. I was supposed to have a number of people travel with me, Dickens, different people and all those, you know, different people. When the story came out, everybody used Thai. You know what they want to use Thai? To just... <laughs> and Christians are very smart too. That's what I tell you. Christians, we know these things. I'm telling you the truth. Christians, God rest the soul of that man, um, Pat Jufo. Not a dick in nothing, just said, I said, Ita, I will go with you. I will stand with you. I think Femi, my best friend, said, we are going together. There are some friends you have. They will go through anything in this life with you. Don't joke with them. They don't play smart. They don't look at the situation and say, I have to be wise with it. And at that situation, he said, I will go with you. And you know what I said to myself? If I use wisdom, and say, let's have the traditional in, in Lagos. You know that's also possible? I can use wisdom. But I know what my wife wanted. She wanted me to go to her village and marry her from her village. It meant a lot to her. Went in, did everything against all the threats and everything. Not a mosquito bite. Nothing and came out. When I came out, the first person I called was my very good friend, Pastor Ima. I know him. I said, Pastor Ima, it's possible because he was facing the exact same thing I was facing. 
I say it's possible. Go for your own. The Lord delivers. <laughs> the, God, the God saves. You know, there, there are things in your life that the devil will use to test what you truly believe, whether you trust in God. If you pass that test, if you take that test, I promise you, you will have the strength to face other things in your life because that is the starting point. David said, when the lion came against me to take away one of these ones, say I slew the lion. When the bear came, guess what I did? Went after the bear. I didn't run away. So this Goliath is not going to be different. At times in your life, you're going to face different things. You're going to face different situations, different challenges. You believe God. You believe the word of God. You know what God says. But it gets to a point that you must take your stand on the word of God. You take a stand on God's word. Take a stand. That's where majority of Christians, that's where we fail. Taking a stand with the word of God, because that's the expression of your faith. What you do because of what you believe. See, when the Bible talks about faith without works is dead, we're not talking about, um, like we talk about works, dead works. Dead works are works that, you know, that you try to do to be able to get God's approval or for God to do things. Now, this, when you talk about faith without works here, he's not referring to that kind of works. He's talking about the works, the expression, what you do because of what he has said. Because there's always something you need to do based on the word. There's always something. Hallelujah. There's, gonna be, there's always going to be a prompting. See, there was a reason why I said to us, if you believe that was stand up and receive it when I was praying. Because, see, there's, there's a way the word of God is coming to you. You should just know to, this is for me. This is me. And you stand up. And anyhow you want to receive it. You want to go on your knees. You want to lie down. Whatever you want to do at that point in time. But there must be an action. There must be an action. There must be an action. Sometimes take seed and sow. Take an offering and give. You know, you give something, you just, Lord, this word is for me. The seed that you sow, the offering that you give because of that word, ties you to that word. It ties you. It's like it wraps you. And God has no other option but to fulfill that word in your life. It was a general word that came forth. It was spoken to all, but you made it yours. You made it yours. You are the one that made the word yours. You took it. Hallelujah, by your corresponding action. By your corresponding action. So that's why it says, faith without works is dead. You can hear it, hear it, hear it, hear it, hear it. If there is no action, there is no result. What are you doing for the world's sake? What are your actions based on what you believe? What are the stands you're taking based on what you believe? Can you take a stand to suffer? If that's all it will take, if that's what the word says? Hallelujah. Imagine God comes to you to give up your job that pays you ten figures and tell you to come work volunteer in church. Can, you, can God ever speak to you like that? Can you hear such words? Hallelujah. Is it possible? Glory be to God. 
So there must always be a corresponding action. There must be something that you do for the world's sake. There must be something that, you know, that God's, God can speak to you. Service is going on. You know, the, there's been so much infiltration or adulteration of the, mind, of the mindset of the world that sometimes you, you have to find a way to expunge it. You, you, you take out time to, to kick it out. Hallelujah. You know, sometimes, honestly, I, I watch this. A senior pastor comes, stays for us for one month, and goes, how many of us take a seat, something, and say, pastor is going to take? God, I feel like shedding tears sometimes. Why, brothers and sisters? Why? Should I be asking, should I, should I say that? I mean, should I? So I look at myself, the church so, are we so backward in, and this is not just out of Greece, it's what is happening generally in the world. Why? How is it? What? There must be something. All the messages that they preach, all the words that they give, See, if you have nothing to give at that time, God sees your heart. He knows. I tell you the truth. If you, have, you can't do anything but say, Lord, I wish I have. I would have done this for them. God sees your heart. And God will always give you the opportunity to do, even if you couldn't do, you can do later, all that kind of stuff. God can. But you know the interesting thing is that it does not cross our heart. It does not cross our mind. It doesn't even register. And so... These messages can come, um, they can preach the best messages, but we don't tie ourselves to the messages to the world. We don't. We don't. Hallelujah. There must be a corresponding action of your belief in God. There must be. Otherwise, faith will not be faith. I tell you the truth. I tell us, you know, there must be God, God, you must be in a situation where God can provoke you, can prompt you to, to do something, to just do something. We must be, we must be that open to the spirit of God. We must be that free. That sometimes, you know, God can speak to you about doing something in the life of somebody. Let's read on. The second thing that this scripture shows to us, you, say, you know, it was telling us that the same way we deliberately and rationally, you know, carry out corresponding actions, you know, when a brother comes to us and say, you know, oh, when you see somebody who is destitute of food and um, in need of, uh, or is homeless and all those things, says, you don't say to that one, hey, you don't prophesy food into the person's stomach. No, you, you don't do that. It's not something we do. You don't uh, tell the person, don't worry, God filled you up and all those things. Say, what do you do? Say, you, because he's a brother, you try to meet the person's need. You find a way to make sure the person is clothed and the person has food. So you don't prophesy food into the person. You don't declare your way well with you. No, you don't do that. So what do you do? You try to do something for the person. Say so that is the same way you should walk your feet. So that's the same way. Hallelujah. There must be a deliberate, rational, you know, action that you're doing because of your faith. Say, no, you don't just tell your brother, you know, the person you need, uh, the Lord bless you, the Lord fill you. Say, that's, 
And you, do you think the person, it will be well, the person will be happy, the person will be filled, the person will all of a sudden be clothed because you prophesied to the person, or be clothed or be, be filled? Do you think that happens? Say, no, you don't. So the same way, that same way, is the same way you should know what it is to put actions to your faith. Put actions to your faith. And he says, why? Because faith without works is dead. And so many Christians have dead faith. Why? Because they know what God is saying. Either they are scared or they are just, I know God heals, but I'm not sure he wants to heal me. I know God saved, but I'm not sure he would like to save me now. So they don't take steps. Hallelujah. Because, you know, just in case it doesn't happen the way God tells you to speak into somebody, say, eh, what if I say what God tells me to say and the thing does not come to pass? I'll not become a prophet of lies or something, all this kind of thing. Because you are too consumed. We are too consumed about ourselves rather than what God has said. We are too consumed of our image before people. How we will appear. But God told you to say this to the individual. But you didn't. Why? Because, hey, I don't know. What if it doesn't come to pass? It is not your integrity that is at stake when you're standing for the word of God. It has nothing to do with you. It has nothing to do with your spiritual life. It has nothing to do for how holy you are. It has nothing to do with how righteous you are. It has everything to do with just obeying God and moving on. They say in our language, a messenger is never afraid. His one is to do what? Deliver the message. He does not care the consequences of the message. He just delivers it and does what? And walk away. You are a messenger sent by God. Or your own is to deliver the message of God's word to the person. And do what? And leave it there. Leave God to work it out in the person's life. Leave God. Leave the, leave the person and God to work it out. Hallelujah. Say, so faith without works is dead. Hallelujah. And that's the reason why we must seek to give corresponding action to our faith. And the Spirit of God is the one that nudges you in this, kind of, in this situation. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Say, even so, faith, if it had not worked, is dead. Being alone. Say, yeah, a man might say, you know, may say, thou hast faith, and I have works. Say, show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show you, or show thee my faith by my works. What I have done by taking steps that I believe God. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. You know, God can say to you, hey, it's time to get a new car. Hallelujah. And you can check your bank account, check your everything and say, Lord, I don't want to take this into, con I don't want to do this right now. And God will say, that's fine. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, God will say, that's fine. But you know what God expects you to do? Go to the dealership, stroll there with zero amount of money, because God said so. Stroll there. How much is this car? How much is it? He tell you the price. Can I test drive it? Can I test drive it? Test drive. It looks good. What are the terms? <laughs> Just talk. Just talk. Just talk. There's somebody that gave a testimony how God told him wanted to buy a new car. And he went there, did exactly like I'm saying, just talk, you're just talking. I like this car. And, was, and after like an hour, they've gone through everything, everything, then somebody else came. I want that same car. He said, no, I'm already negotiating this car. He said, I'll buy you any other car. Let me have this one. Okay, buy me, please. And walked away from the dealership, zero money, 
zero everything with a brand new car. Because somebody else, somebody else wanted desperately the car he was looking at that had zero amount of money to buy, cannot meet the terms, cannot know when he was just looking at it as driving and doing everything. Brothers and sisters, the things of the spirit doesn't make sense to the natural man. But your obedience, your obedience, just, you're just following it, is all that God expects. It's all that God expects. You've heard Pastor Chris Devlin talk about how God told him to go minister somewhere. He didn't have any money. He didn't have any ticket. He didn't have anything. And went to the airport with his passport. Went in there. And stood in the line. Hallelujah. And everybody was going. And everybody was going. And he talked about how when he got there, you know, and he stood there. Hallelujah. All of a sudden, somebody who was supposed to fly couldn't fly. They gave him his ticket, and that's how he flew first class. According to so the, the beginning thing is to know that God speaks to you, that you hear God. So hear it. Say it. Think on it. Say it. You know, practice, take a stand on what God says. And that's how the world gets to. So many things will not make sense to you. And brothers and sisters, these things are not far-fetched of you gearing God for the miraculous, for the supernatural. But it has its starting point. It has its beginning point. It has it. The little, little things. Archbishop Idaos has said, why do you believe God to give you a spouse? You want, because you have been declaring a good wife coming from the Lord and all those things. Why do you think God will do that? When God cannot even speak to you to give them 50 naira and you obey. You can't hear the voice of God to give 50 naira. And you want to hear the voice of God to receive a whole human being. See, how is that? Somebody asked him, how do you know that this is the Lord? He said, because I am no longer an apprentice. I know the voice of God. You learn the voice of God with little, little obedience. Can God tell you to go be a blessing, to do this, to do X, Y, Z, and you follow it? If you can learn to follow that, then trust me. One of these days, he will deliver to you something bigger than your natural capacity. It begins by, you know, your corresponding action. Hallelujah. Your obedience to God. Say, thou believest that there is one God, verse 19. Say, thou doest well. In other words, you try. You're trying, yes, my baby. You're trying, he says, the devil even believes too. And he takes a step further than you. He trembles. So the devil, devil even believes and trembles. Because somebody believes that there's one God that God is, it doesn't mean the person is practicing faith. That's what he's trying to say. Say so you believe that there is one God, that doest well. You try. Say, so even Satan believes and even trembles, but still does not obey the voice of God. Even in his trembling, in his shaking, oh my God, God is, he does not walk in obedience. He walks in rebellion. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. There must of necessity be the actions that you're taking because of your belief. Hallelujah. Your belief is only demonstrated by your actions. What you do says what you believe. Tells what is in your heart. Hallelujah. What you do. The Bible says, Abraham, See, verse 21 and 22. Say, was not our father Abraham 
Um, let me read this in, um, let me see. I'm reading Amplified now. Was not our, bad, our father Abraham shown to be justified, made acceptable to God by his works when he brought to the altar as an offering his own son, Isaac? You see, that is faith, you know, that his faith was cooperated, was cooperating with his works. You know that word? He believes God. And his faith was completed and reached its supreme expression when he implemented it by good, appropriate works. In other words, how did, you know, talk about the faith of Abraham. Abraham did not only say, I know God is able to raise my son. He was willing to put his son at the altar. It's not just a case I know. But the Bible says Abraham sacrificed his son. When God called Abraham, hey, come out of your kindred. By faith, Abraham left, not knowing what would become of him. There was no guarantee about his future. There was no guarantee. He had no zero guarantee about what would become of him. Apart from that, God is the one that said to him, come, follow me. Hallelujah. There must be you know, for example, the Bible tells us we are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. See, we are the righteousness. You know the works that follows that scripture is that we begin to do what? Work righteously because it says what? You are the righteousness. If you, you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. If you truly believe it, that you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, you will not begin to walk loosely and say, after all, it's not by my... What I do is by God. Because you believe the scripture, I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And so I take steps of righteousness. James 3 tells us, say, do not be deceived. He that doeth righteous is righteous. Hallelujah. You know, the Bible tells us in Ephesians and chapter 2, we know the scripture, but, you know, it tells us by faith are we saved through grace. Sorry, by grace are we saved, by faith, yeah, by faith are we saved through grace. Let me read that scripture to us. Hallelujah. Say, by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of, our, of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not, not of works, lest any man should boast, Hallelujah. Say so it's by faith we are saved through grace. Hallelujah. And many times we are quick to quick put the scripture. It's a not of works. You know, that so that any man can boast. In other words, we are saved by grace through faith. Hallelujah. As saved because we are saved through grace, there is nothing that we have to do. There are no works that are requir required of us. There are no works of faith that are required of us. Brothers and sisters, the next verse tells us differently. Verse 10. For we are his workmanship. For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works. Hallelujah. Which God had before ordained that we should walk in. In other words, it tells us not by works so that any man can boast, but it tells us that we are his workmanship. There is work that we have been created to do. Hallelujah. And the scripture tells us how this works. So if you are the righteousness of God, then understand that there is the works of righteousness. There, is, there are the steps of righteousness. There are the steps that you take because you're the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. So what are you doing because of what you believe? You know, God can speak to you, you know, and you begin to rationalize what God says. Begin to think it, you know contemplate, mix it. Brothers and sisters, it does not benefit us as believers when we begin to rationalize or contemplate the word of God. Our responsibility is to walk in obedience. God says it, you believe it, you do it. Let God be able to speak to your heart. 
Let God be able to talk to you. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. In 1 Thessalonians and chapter 1, Paul was talking to them about this work of faith. There are things that you do to prove you have faith, to prove, you know, that works, you know, that you do, you know, because you have, you, you, to express your love, to express your hope. Hallelujah. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, you know, verse 2 and 3, it says, we give thanks to God always for you all, making mention of you in our prayers. Look at this. Remembering without ceasing your work of faith. Your work of faith. Then you talk about your labor of love. You can see, when you put in the work for love, hallelujah. When you love somebody that is not deserving of loving, it's called your labor of love. This person does not merit your, your mercy, but you gave it anyhow. It's a, your labor of love. Hallelujah. Then it says your patience of hope. Trusting God, it has not happened but you. Your patience. These things are works. They are the expression of your confidence in God. That the expression of, you know, your stance in God, your work of faith, the things that you're doing because of your faith in him, your labor of love in the house of God, in the kingdom of God, even though people don't even recognize it, don't even appreciate it, and there is no thanks given to you, but you do it because it's your labor of love for the kingdom. Hallelujah. Talk about your patience in hope. Your patience in hope. These three things, the Bible tells us, faith, hope, and love endure it forever. You know that. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. I close with this scripture. The Bible tells us in Hebrews and chapter 11, verse 23, it says, by faith, Moses, when he was born, was he three months of his parents because they saw he was a proper child. It, they took a very high risk to keep him and not to allow him, you know, for what they were doing to other children to be done to him. They took the risk to keep him for three months. Hallelujah. See, and they were not afraid of the king's commandment or the kind of judgment that could come on them, which means death. They didn't. Say, by faith, Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter or a prince in Egypt. When he said he refused to be called, he refused to enjoy the benefits of being the son of Pharaoh's daughter. Every good things, every luxury and all that. Say, instead, he chose to suffer. Where is it now? Choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy pleasures of sin for a season. See, he esteemed the reproach of Christ greater. Than, uh, than greater uh, the repose of Christ, greater riches than the treasures in Egypt. The Bible says, for he had respect unto the recompense of the reward. By choice, by choice, he took a stand for God. By choice. And if you read through the entire book of Hebrews 11, talk about those who through their actions, you know, they took a stand for God. And Bible talk about how they received their reward. Hallelujah. What are the things that you're doing for the word's sake? What are the expression, you know, that you give for the word's sake? Hallelujah. The works of faith can best be inter interpreted the faith that works. 
That's the faith that works. Your work of faith, your steps of faith, your actions, your corresponding actions, because God has said, because God says, so I'm going to do this. Hallelujah. Brothers and sisters, the Bible tells us that, you know, we know this, that standing for God is not without a price. It's called persecution. Many don't want persecution. Many don't want um, trouble, in quotes. But you know what the Bible tells us? It says, those that have, for, you know, that have left father, mother, sister, land, houses, and all those things Jesus was saying, will receive in this time, in this age, all those things, an eternal life, then it says, with persecution. The reason why we have not received like we ought to is because we shy away from the persecution, from the tongue working, from the name calling. We don't want to be seen, known, and called. So we, but the Bible says, the things that you have sacrificed for the God's sake, for the kingdom's sake, you will receive a hundredfold of these things and with persecution in this age and in the age to come with persecution. The only way those things will come for us is because or persecution can come is because you are taking a stand for the word. You take a stand for what the scripture says. And that's how also the reward comes. That's how reward comes. But if we flip-flop, if we dance around, if we play smartness, if we become too diplomatic with what the word says, then a hundredfold, the reward, the things that are supposed to come, can come because those things come with persecution. They come with persecution. Hallelujah. Being bold for God is the reason why you receive what God says the scripture will deliver to you. But being bold for God does not also come without persecution. And we have to understand that and embrace it. Hallelujah. Embrace your work with God. Embrace it. Embrace it. And this is the danger of not living like that. If you don't practice this kind of obedience generally, because um, it doesn't work in certain things, you don't work, okay, um, my finances, so let me be very obedient to God and do everything, but not practice this when it comes to your health or your other aspects. You can't, you can't, I use the term, Practice disobedience in certain things and practice obedience in other things. No. It doesn't work like that. No, it doesn't. Hallelujah. You either follow God totally or you're not following him at all. Following him totally means that you suffer some persecution. But it's your choice. You don't get to certain points and use wisdom and smartness and no. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Say, faith without works is dead. Faith without a corresponding action. Mounting your faith. No. It's not what yields results. No. Faith <clears throat> is meant to be seen. It's meant to be heard. And it's meant to be felt. Your faith in God. In God. People must see it. It must be heard from you. And must be felt. This person, this man is a man of faith. I know he would not, you know, he won't compromise. He's going to take it. I know. I know that guy. That's who he is. May that be your testimony. May that be your testimony. May you be known for somebody who will stand Unapologetically for the gospel 
for your faith, for your conviction of the gospel. In the name of the Lord Jesus. May you be known as one that will not compromise, that will stand his ground and say like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, if I perish, I perish. But this my God, I will stand with him. May that be your testimony. In the name of the Lord Jesus. And may the Lord confirm his words in, in, a, in your mouth with signs and wonders following in the name of Jesus. As you stand for God, may you see the fourth man standing by you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Bible says concerning Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego that when they were thrown inside the fire, the king said, but there is a fourth man he said, I thought there were just three of them, but I see the fourth man as like the Son of God. That's my prayer for you. As you stand for God, I pray that you see the fourth man in the name of, in the name of Jesus. The Bible says the fire would not kindle over us. Say the water would not drown us. Meaning that we pass through these things, but we are not consumed. You will not be consumed in that circumstance. You will not be consumed in that situation. That thing will not take you down in the name of Jesus. It comes, but like fire, it says it will not burn you. You will not even smell of smoke in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Say so like river, it will not drown you. The Lord will keep you afloat in the name of Jesus. The Lord sustain you. The Lord make a way for you in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, God bless you.